So there is this thing that I've noticed about my face. Hear me out here. There is something about my face that just repels the fierce. I could put on all the lashes, all the contour, all the highlight in the world, and for some reason it always ends up looking pretty. I can't quite get to fierce. So today, I have set myself a challenge. I'm going to attempt to be the baddest of Instagram baddies. So will I achieve the hashtag Instagram baddie status? Keep watching and we'll find out. <laughs> So step one, Instagram brow. This is kind of characterized by that very defined crisp border and also the outer portion of the brow is quite dark and then it fades to a lighter shade towards the inner brow, the fade. I'm using a gel product here and an angle brush so that I can really get that precision and carve, carve out those angles. I wanna clarify that I'm having a bit of fun here, but this is not a skit or it's not a comparison as to which makeup style is best. Um, that's not the kind of conversation that I'm trying to promote. I appreciate all styles of makeup and I'm willing to try everything and anything. So this is a fun experiment. So once we've got that dark gel on the outer brow, I'm gonna switch to a lighter gel for the inner brow to try to achieve that faded effect. And try <laughs> is the operative word here. Um, this is kind of tricky for me because I have a good amount of dark brow towards the, the beginning portion of my brows. It doesn't really want to be light there, um, but hey, the thought was there. So for the really fleeky brow, we have to carve out the edges with a concealer too, obviously. So I'm using a teeny flat brush here for all of the precision, and you can also go in and correct any little mistakes that you might have made when you filled in the brows. And to clean the underside of the brow, I actually used what was an old favorite, a MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre and also extended that uh, onto the lid area to act as a bit of an eye primer. Immediately, as soon as I put this product on, I remembered exactly why I stopped using it. It looks, oh my gosh, so incredibly dry on my eyelids, uh, but it was too late to turn back, so we soldier on. If you've seen any one of my videos, you'll know that my brows are perpetually brushed up, but I'm gonna do something different today. We're gonna use a brow gel to neatly comb the hairs into place. Um, and here is a little bit of a before and after. I actually did like how these turned out. I feel like I could have made the tail just that little bit darker and more Instagram-like, um, but at the time they already felt really, really bold on my face. Onto the eyes, and I'm gonna use some uh, surgical tape, it's that papery tape, to map out my eyeshadow and winged liner. I don't think that the genuine Instagram baddie uses tape, but um, this lazy creamer certainly does. So this way I can kind of make a mess and I can blend super vigorously and still keep that really crisp edge to my eyeshadow. And you might be catching on to a bit of a theme here, right? There are a lot of crisp edges in this look. Crisp brows, crisp, crisp lips, crisp liner. And I think that's one of the, the defining elements of Instagram makeup. For eyeshadow, I'm using the Ciate Chloe Morello palette. The texture of these eyeshadows is absolutely exquisite. High five, Chloe, you did such an amazing job. I was going to um, do some sort of cut crease here. When I really researched Instagram baddie makeup, I noticed that most of them actually focused on this really thick wing liner. And the eyeshadow wasn't a cut crease, it was typically warm and smoky and matte. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're taking a warm transition and then a slightly deeper shade through the crease and then a dark shade through the outer corner. You've seen this many, many times before, right? The placement, it's pretty predictable and formulaic, uh, which is not a bad thing. It actually turned out really nice, uh, but it, you know, you've seen it before. I asked Sharon, what could I have potentially done to have made this look more baddie? And she actually suggested some black eyeshadow for some extra drama and I totally agree. Damn it, I should have done that. On that note, almost every single Instagram baddie rocks some sort of matte, black, bold wing. And this eyeliner is actually pretty thick all the way from the inner corner to the outer corner. Uh, thick wings, they're a little tricky on me because I have a bit of a hooded or a heavy eyelid. So I find that my eyeliner can only get so thick before it starts to sort of cut into the hood of the eye. And that's when your wing starts to lose fluidity. It looks a little bit lumpy and bumpy, particularly when the eyes are closed. So a, a bit of a workaround, I will either map the eyeliner or place the tape on a flatter angle. Uh, so you might wanna try that if you have a hooded eye shape. Um, it's a little, little bit of a workaround. And just when you think your eyeliner is thick enough, my advice would be to go back and double it. 
and then you can finally uh, peel off the tape and unveil your perfect wing liner, pat yourself on the back, you're a boss, and you slay. Sometimes you might find that that eyeshadow can kind of creep around the edges of the tape, so at this stage feel free to clean it up with a makeup wipe or a micellar water or whatever. Then we're going to tight line the upper lash line. Really want the root of the lash to be pitch black. There is something about bits of skin peeping through eyeliner. It, it's totally irrational, but it's my only makeup pet peeve. Um, we're also going to connect the wing here to the lower lash line. This is not a crucial element at all. It's just one of those things that suits my eye shape. Let's move on to the face and we'll finish off the eyes a little bit later. I'm moisturizing for the second time on this day because we are going to do some serious bakage up in here. And you know, having dry skin and serious bakage, it's, it's a tricky combination. A bit of pore filling primer on uh, the nose and on the T-zone area. I'm pretty sure the Instagram people are poreless. Um, that's what I've kind of gathered, or maybe masters of face tune. It's one or the other, but hopefully the pore filling primer gets us that little bit closer. I was gonna go ahead and use my regular foundation mix, but you know what? That would be such a cop out. And for this look, we absolutely need some MAC Studio Fix. I feel like this foundation has developed a bit of a bad reputation, right? To a lot of people, it's synonymous with dry, cakey, orange, kind of mask-like foundation. But I don't actually dislike this formula at all. Like it's not my favorite, but I would happily wear it. You know, it's super long lasting. Uh, it can oxidize a little bit. So I tend to just pick a shade lighter. Once the first layer has set, I'm gonna add another layer because I feel like I'm sort of fighting against my naturally light hand here. Uh, also, we're gonna mash the product into the hairline and the ears and the neck. And to be honest, it pains me to do this, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Some under eye corrector because why not? <laughs> At this stage, I'm just sort of searching for reasons to add extra steps and layers because I am so truly committed to making this work. I know in the past I've said that I don't use the, the shape tape um, applicator because it loads on the product, but that is kind of the aim of the game today. Complete and utter flawlessness. Um, but I did get halfway down my cheek and I tapped out you guys. I, I just couldn't do it. I don't mean to, to disappoint you guys. Um, also, at this point, my mom walks in and she goes to me, Oh, that makeup look is so pretty. <laughs> I just wanted to be fierce one day in my life, you know, but I, I became determined, determined to prove her wrong. This look was going to be fierce. So we're going to add some highlight onto the center of the forehead, uh, between the brows, bridge of the nose, around the mouth, and dab furiously. Beauty Blender got a really good workout that day. Very important step, baking. So we're gonna take a, a really generous amount of powder on a damp sponge and then layer it in all the areas where we put that concealer. And do you see the look in my eyes? That is a lady on a mission. So now we're gonna leave the powder for some minutes to cook while we finish off the eyes. So sometimes the Instagram baddie has a smoked lower lash line and sometimes not. I felt like it needed a little something. Uh, so we're going to stamp a, a dark eyeshadow onto the lash line and then just buffing out with a lighter shade. I did choose a slightly cooler option here because I find that sometimes a lot of warm shadows on the lower lash line can kind of make the eyes look a little bit bloodshot. Lashes are so key for this look, so key. And I really wanted to use the uh, House of Lashes Iconic, but I tore my entire collection apart and I couldn't find any. So it looks like I need to make another order. So instead, I settled on um, this style called Alessandra by Manicare. They're really dramatic, but they're a little fluffier, you know, they're not as structured, but they will do. So now we can sweep away any of that remaining bake, bakeage on the face. I wouldn't typically put powder all over my face because I'm that dry, but we are going to do that today. This is the MAC uh, Mineralized Skin Finish. It's in a slightly darker shade. So this is kind of working as a bit of a, a preliminary bronzer, but also at this stage, I started to feel a bit of a white cast coming along from that baking. So this will kind of help to, to deepen the perimeters of the face. And for the actual bronzer, are you exhausted yet? Because I'm honestly getting sick of my voice. MAC Give Me Sun. This is so much warmer than I expected it to be. And if you're kind of a little bit wary of those bronzers that can potentially turn a little bit orange, I think that you can safely skip this one. 
On to contour because I refuse to skip any steps today. This is uh, more of an ashy powder. It's a little bit more cool toned and blending that through just the very deepest part of the cheekbones, um, a little on the temples and the jawline. When you are blending so many products and there's so many steps, the, the cheekbone region can kind of start to lose its sharpness, right? It gets a little bit blurry. And this look is very much about the sharp lines. So we're doing some more baking. And we're taking this from the ear to the corner of the mouth. So we're gonna dust this powder off almost immediately. I give it like 30 seconds because I find the white cast on the jawline can kind of start to make it look as though the face doesn't match the neck or the body. Also contouring the nose. And you know what, I admit, this was a pretty lackluster attempt on my part and I could have done a lot better. My nose had sort of disappeared from the surface of my face and now it's back, so yay. Based on my extensive research, blush isn't really a focal part of this look, right? And I never really noticed it in an Instagram makeup, but it does, I find, help to mesh together the bronzer and the contour. It's like a finishing, finishing touch. So we want a, a very warm toned, intense highlight today. And what better product, I ask, than Becca Champagne Pop? You know, I'm always heavy handed with highlights, so this was an absolute joy. Nose highlight, also very crucial. We're doing the exclamation point style, right? Where you create a dot on the highest point of the nose tip and then a distinct line down the bridge to create kind of an exclamation point. I think that Nikki Tutorials might have coined this technique and this concept and honestly it's genius. A very cool optical illusion to create a more ski slope nose, more lifted tip. Also a sliver of highlight underneath the brow to kind of catch the light and also to get caught in all of my baby hairs that I didn't bother to remove. Whoops! Uh, also a bit of highlight around the tear ducts. Um, excuse the Q-tip of my nose. I was getting a runny nose and there was just no way that I was gonna ruin my makeup and blow my nose right now. Not today. New favorite, this setting spray, Amazeballs. I purchased it in Korea and the mist is so fine that I almost can't actually feel the product landing on my face. Amazing. Conceal the lash band with some more of that black gel liner. Warning, something very traumatic is going to happen right about now. Uh, if this happens to you, the best solution that I found is you take a pointed Q-tip and put it in some micellar water and then very carefully remove the mistake and remove the blob, but also feather a little bit around that area so that when you go to reapply the eyeshadow, it looks like that patch is a little more diffused. It will never be the same again, that eyeshadow, but it's okay, don't cry. For lips, you have options. So most frequently I notice the Instagram baddie look paired with either a, like a nude lip or a bit of a grazy nude or a, a very dark vampy lip. But more importantly, it's almost always a liquid lipstick formula, very trendy right now, and likely a bit of filler, but we're gonna skip that bit today. So I'm lining with MAC Strip Down to get that really crisp edge. Uh, great nude lip liner, love it to bits. Also topping with the Rimmel Provocalypse in Skinny Dipping. Love this shade. It does have a little bit of that grey edge, but it's still very wearable. The formula is the most indelible that I've ever come across in any liquid lipstick. It lasts through eating and drinking, and I actually need an oil product um, to remove it, so super long lasting. The product also has a gloss side, which you can use as a lip topper if you want a little bit more of a, a glossy look, but I'm gonna leave it matte today. A quick hit of mascara on uh, the upper and lower lashes while the lip sets. We're not quite done yet. You see, styling can make or break this look. You're gonna need some sort of jumper, like maybe an Adidas jumper, that would be great. A black choker that I'd clearly forgotten on this day, and a cap of some sort. I, f I think this is such an interesting juxtaposition of a very done face with casual elements in the clothing. To be honest, it, it doesn't make much sense to me, but we're gonna roll with it. In all honesty, I actually loved this look. Uh, it pictured flawlessly, oh my gosh. The skin in photos just looked amazing. I did notice in person that it was settling a little bit into my laugh lines, uh, but that's not something that you could see in the photos. 100%, absolutely, there is artistry and skill involved in this Instagram makeup. I think I did okay, right? Not as fierce as I was hoping, uh, but you guys can tell me how you think I did in the comment section below. Please be nice. <laughs> I hope you're all having a wonderful day. 
Subscribe if you like what I do and I will speak to you all very soon. Bye.